we're live. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to day number five of uh, Knowledge Festival number one. And uh, we've been having a, uh, a great week, week up to now um, when it comes to uh, the uh, amount of information and knowledge that we uh, could gather and the discussions that we had so uh, it was really uh, uh, it's been it's been a, a, a beautiful um, experience up to now, and uh, it's going to be better and better with uh, every day and uh, and uh, each discussion and, and presentation that we have. So now today, um, it's a uh, uh, it, it's a very interesting uh, and important part of the topic. Uh, hopefully we can get um, all the people in because there have been some uh, um, personal issues with, with some of the participants and um, all kind of um, all kind of things that um, happen around, um, something like this when you're trying to uh, get people together from different parts of the world um, all online we've been we've been lucky enough to to have so many um, uh, experts from different places uh, being there at the right time for us but uh, it may be uh, that one or two people uh, of our experts have um, some uh, things to attend to uh, today, um, which might make it a little uh, complicated for them to take part in our discussions, but hopefully um, they can make it. Uh, aside from that, uh, today's uh, first topic, the first part is understanding immune disorders. So. Uh, up to now, we had uh, the ways to basically understand the immune system itself, understand uh, different ways to, uh, you know, boost it or um, uh, certain parts of it, uh, explanations by different systems, etc. Uh, but today we have the part where we say, okay, when when it doesn't work correctly when it doesn't work to our like uh, to our liking to to our benefit or what happens there what's the understanding of let's say um, uh, each each of these medicine systems um, about um, the uh, immune disorders so um, we have the paper presentation part for now. Um, we will start with uh, Dr. Indu uh, at first, coming from the Sita section uh, with a paper on natural immunomodulator, uh, the Amukara um, used in Siddha system of medicine. Now, uh, Dr. Indu, uh, it's all yours. Please go ahead. Thank you, sir. Good morning to all. I am Dr. Indu from National Institute of Siddha, Chennai. I'm a PG scholar. You, you just need to say next to uh, go to the next uh, slide. Okay, so introduction. The Siddha system is one of the ancient system in India, which is discovered by sage Siddhas. Siddhas treated the various health ailments with natural resources of herbals, metals, minerals, zoological, and marine products. Into 64 types of medicines, that is 32 internal medicines and 32 external medicines. Next slide, sir. 
Siddhas use the natural sources as medicine to treat the diseases and also prevent the diseases. The natural resources have been tremendously used in Siddha as a preventive and immune boosting immune boosting agents because of its has a rich phytoconstituents like flavonoids, uh, glycosides, vitamins, etc. These are all the techniques for uh, immunity we used. Next slide. Sir. Next, coming to the immunity. Immune system uh, is eliminating microorganisms and toxic substances by recognizes the antigens on the surfaces of the substances, and it must avoid response that tissues. Uh, in current scenario. The society focus on uh, immune boosting drugs to prevent any type of disease because building one's own immunity is the best way to prevent unknown diseases. Nowadays, the entire world is struggled to overcome the COVID-19 pandemic situation. The number of positive cases and mortality also increased. Uh, from the yesterday data, the new cases were 37,312 and the new death cases reported in uh, India is uh, 559. So, uh, WHO and researchers and physicians are advise, advising to strengthen our immunity to prevent COVID-19 infection by health, taking healthy foods, uh, preventive immunomodulating medicines, and some activities like pranayama, yoga, etc. In this view, some herbal preparations are uh, being used as an immunomodulator in Siddha medicine. Next, coming to the uh, next slide, uh, Amukra Kelangi Shuranam, that is Vaitanya uh, It's widely used in the Ayu system of medicine, uh, also called as Ashwagandha. The Amukra Kelangi Shuranam, uh, we advise to patient uh, one to two grams twice a day with hot water or uh, milk was recommended as an immunity uh, enhancer specific to the respiratory care in the guidelines for uh, Siddha for mitigating COVID-19 released by the Ministry of Ayush. Uh, it is also indicated for the respiratory Ill illnesses like uh, tuberculosis, asthma, and also the liver disorders, gastric ulcers, and anemia. Amukara, that is a uh, Vaitanya somnifera, it's a plain powder of a uh, root of uh, Vaitanya somnifera, is extensively used in the Siddha system of medicine for various purposes, uh, particularly used to enhance the immunity. And it also acts as a analgesic, sedative, immune booster, Nervine tonic, regenerating agent, aphrodisiac, alterative, and deabsorbent. Next, sir. In Sita, we always concentrate on the improvement of host response. Uh, that's immunity, quality of life, and strengthens the body, mind, and soul to defeat the disease progression. As this, uh, has the potential to strengthen the seven physical constraints of the body and uh, as its uh, adverse effects never reported. This drug can be used as a prophylactic measure for all the people who are high risk and close contact with COVID 19 population, including vulnerable populations like uh, uh, pregnant women, children, diabetic age groups. The availability of the drug is also good unless. Uh, chances of drug non-compliance. Currently, modern medicines are we used in against uh, COVID-19 uh, uh, having uh, various side effects uh, so that we bring the natural products uh, of uh, a research review of Vaitanya Somnifera. Scientific study results uh, shows that uh, Vaitanya Somnifera possesses anti-inflammatory, antioxidants, immunomodulatory, analgesic, anti-tumor, and the anti arthritic activity, uh, neurodegeneration activity, and uh, as well as uh, antiviral activity, etc. The phytochemicals present in Amukra, such as uh, Vaitaferin A, Vaitanoloids, are responsible for its immunomodulatory activity. And Vaitaferin A, Vaitanoloids A1, cytoindocytes 7 to 10 are the main reason for its antioxidant activity. Phytochemicals like uh, cytoindocyte 9 and 10, phytosomniferon A, dacosterol, uh, vitaferin A are responsible for its immunomodulatory effect.
Maitanya somnifera immunity boosting against the COVID-19. There is a reference stated that the vitanoloids from Vaitanya somnifera was investigated as an immune booster and an antiviral agent against the COVID-19, uh, coronavirus-19. In this study, vitanoloid G, vitanoloid I, and vitanoloid M from the Vaitanya somnifera showed the highest binding affinity with PL3, Pro, CL Pro, and spike protein respectively. These vitanoloids from Vaitanya somnifera holds promising antiviral efficacy against the COVID-19. Next. A research study uh, stated that the docking and simulation results predicted by high binding affinity of the Vaitaferin A, that is WA, um, toward the neuraminidase and revealed several interesting molecular interactions with the residues, which are catalytically important during molecular dynamics simulations. The study confirmed that the anti-influenza properties of active constituents of Vaitanya somnifera herb is uh, in targeting neuraminidase of H1N1 influenza viruses. I quote the reference here. Uh, this is Amukra Kalangi Churanam. Um, in Siddha, we use uh, um, we mostly use the part of Vaitanya somnifera is a root and it has a bitter taste and uh, its potency was a uh, it potency is hot potency and the actions of Vaitanya somnifera mentioned in Siddha text Gunapadam Mulihe Vagupu that is a uh, vermifuge, vepahatri, alterative, udal tetri, deobstruent, vika murki, diuretic, sirenir perki, tonic, palakari, sedative, udal vepahatri. Soporific Urakamundaki. These are the actions that are quoted in our Siddha text. Next, coming to the discussion, uh, according to the available information in Siddha literature, the drug Amukra is uh, strongly indicated for all kind of infectious diseases and uh, immunity related diseases because it, it has a bitter taste and rich uh, source of phytoconstituents, which may help to neutralizing the phytated kabam. Uh, we compare the COVID-19 to the uh, uh, kabam, kaba disease, so that it, uh, it will help to uh, overcome the diseases and uh, boosting our immune system against the all infectious diseases and uh, also coronavirus disease. In scientific disease, Amukra has been proved for its antiviral, anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, and immunomodulatory actions. Uh, this is one of the paper I quoted here. Opportunity for clinical repurposing in COVID-19 management. The literature indicates that um, Amukara Vaitanya Somnifera has the potential for maintaining the immune homeostasis, regulating inflammations, um, sub suppressing pro-inflammatory cytokines and organ protection that is a nervous system, heart, lung, liver, and kidney also. So that we strongly recommended the uh, Amukara Shurunam or Vaitanya Somnifera uh, is for the uh, boosting our immunity to the current pandemic situation. Next. Sir. Conclusion from this review, the drug Amukara Vaitanya Somnifera confirmed as a natural immunomodulator and it can be used as a prophylactic Siddha medicine to all the people who are at the risk and close contact with COVID-19 patients, including the vulnerable populations also that uh, pregnant women, children, and geriatric age group. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for thank you. giving me this opportunity to present. And I would like to thank my uh, guide, Dr. Shivakumar, and my director, uh, Dr. Meena Kumari, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. That was great. Uh, just one question. Is, uh, is uh, Amukara, is, is that uh, actually ashwagandha? Uh, or, or is yes, it? Sir. Yeah, yes, right? So it, yes, this sir. Is a, just, just for our uh, viewers and, uh, and uh, listeners who are not from, from India, that there are uh, different names sometimes when you're in South India and in North India. I mean, it, it's, a, it, it's a, a continent for itself. So it's a, it's a huge uh, place. Uh, it's just not a... Um, a a little region. So South Indians and North Indians and uh, West Indians, they, they all have uh, many different languages and some of the, uh, of the uh, uh, herbs that we are talking about might have different names in, in different regions. Uh, but uh, this was 
very interesting also to to hear it from uh, from uh, another side. Um, and we, uh, the thing is, we we had um, some information on ashwagandha uh, uh, in <clears throat> one of the uh, earlier days, but still we we got some new information now uh, from Dr. Indu, which is uh, great and which shows us um, the um, potency and and the possibilities in each of uh, these uh, these herbs. Uh, so thank you very much really for your time and your effort to uh, uh, give us this information. Um, uh, sorry for, uh, you know, uh, jumping in and, uh, and um, having to, to uh, uh, go back one or two slides, but, uh, and also sorry to the viewers and listeners if, if there are some sound issues or something. It's, it's just because, as I said before, we are uh, gathering people from all around the world and uh, there are different uh, weather situations, internet situations, uh, you know, personal situations that um, may come into play at certain points. But uh, great one. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, now, uh, Vinayak, are we? Yeah, Dr. Aris Parvati. Uh, Dr. Parvati will uh, give us uh, the second paper, which will be um, scoping antiviral and immunomodulatory activity of Siddha polyherbal formulation, uh, Aratai uh, Kudinir Churnam, in the wake of COVID 19 pandemic. Um, so, Doctor, uh, if you are ready, then. Yes, sir. All right, great. So then it's all yours. We are listening. Greetings to all. My name is Dr. Parvati, PG Scholar, National Institute of Siddha. First of all, I would like to thank the organizers of Knowledge Festival for giving me an opportunity to present my topic. So the title of my topic is Scoping Antiviral and Immunomodulatory Activity of Siddha Polyherbal Formulation, Arati Kudunil Shunam, in the wake of COVID-19 pandemic situation. Next slide, sir. First of all, I would like to say a few words about the Siddha system of medicine. Siddha is one of the ancient system of medicine, which incorporate the extensive use of herbs, inorganic and animal products for maintaining a healthy life. So the system has diverse and extensive use of natural resources for the prevention and management of comorbid conditions, widespread epidemic or pandemic diseases. So as we know, healthcare system in India is still struggling with the second wave of COVID-19. So we are frequently hearing about immunity, immunomodulation and the prophylactic measures, etc. So the role of immunology to, do, uh, to deal with this pandemic has been a stimulating concept and widespread efforts have been made to identify agents as prophylactic agents or therapeutic regimens to combat COVID infection or to reinforce the immunocompetence of the host. Even in this COVID pandemic situation, the role of immunomodulator is well established as a key component. So the system has a lot to offer in the management of immunocompromised disorders in which it has the lowest possible side effects. And uh, certain herbal drugs are believed to promote positive health and maintain natural resistance against infection by re-establishing the body equilibrium and conditioning the body tissues. So the use of herbs for improving the natural resistance of the body against common infection is the guiding principle of Siddha. Next slide, sir. So as you know, conventional immunomodulatory uh, chemotherapy costs a huge expense and it is unaffordable. And it has some side effects also, like uh, it induces pulmonary toxicity or uh, nephrotoxicity, uh, neurotoxicity, or it may uh, increase the chance of infection also. So it, num uh, a number of synthetic drugs are being used in immunotherapeutics and the diverse adverse uh, side effects caused by them has produced awareness to limit the usage and to search for a safe alternative. So there is a need of a safe, cost-effective alternative for this. The system has tested thoroughly the herbal, herbs and the polyherbal formulations via in vitro and in vivo methods, which include Urei Madhrek, Shea Churnam, and uh, Nilavimba Kurdir, etc. A number of um, 
A wide number of herbal formulations or preparation have been indicated in Siddha literature towards the management of several diseases that result in immunodeficiency. But many uh, Siddha drugs have not been characterized completely using modern scientific methods and the key bioactive constituents are yet to be explored to a greater extent. So what I mean is uh, more uh, pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamic studies have to be carried out in the Siddha system of medicine in the field of Siddha. So the effectiveness of number of Siddha uh, formulations of drug are being scientifically validated and proved thereby supporting and promoting the value of Siddha system of medicine. For example, Brahma and the Bhairava Matre and Elevempa Purvaya, which are extensively used in the Siddha system of medicine, uh, it is effective against um, chicken gunia infection and uh, evidence-based medicines like uh, Milavempa Kudunir and uh, Arathodi Kudunir and Amakuri Shunam, even Kabasura Kudunir also, they are extensively used in the dengue outbreak and even in the COVID pandemic situation also, it is a uh, very good remedy against, uh, actually it acts as a prophylactic measure against uh, dengue infections and also Kabasura Kudunir, Sarvasura Kudunir, Vishasura Kudunir, these are all decoctions actually. These are uh, effective against uh, uh, swine flu fever. Next slide, sir. So what is immunity? Immunity is nothing but it, it is a body's natural defense system against various kinds of infections. So um, actually the immune system is a uh, host defense system comprising many biological structures and processes within an organism that protects against diseases. So to function properly, an, an immune system must detect a wide variety of agents known as pathogens, viruses, parasitic bones, and distinguish them from organisms on health tissue. So that's the thing. And immunomodulation, immunomodulators. This is nothing but the biomolecules of synthetic or bio, biological origin capable of modulating, suppressing, stimulating any component of adaptive or uh, innate immunity. Uh, these have the ability to alter the immune response in humans and animals against infectious agents. So immunomodulators are widely classified into immunosuppressants, immunostimulants, and immunoadjuvants. Uh, so immunostimulants are the agents that activate or induce the component of Im uh, immune system. And uh, immunoadjuvants are specific immune stimulators which enhance the e efficacy of the vaccine. And the immunosuppression that, uh, that are the molecules that inhibit the uh, immune system that can be used to control the pathological immune reaction. That means it can be used in the autoimmune diseases uh, like rheumatoid arthritis or something. Uh, it can be used in the organ transplantation, something like that. So as we, uh, as I told before, uh, we need a safe and uh, cost-effective uh, alternative. So herbal molecules is something like that. And it, it, uh, it can be used to, uh, in which it, it stimulates or suppresses the component of immune system, including both the innate and adaptive immune responses. It, uh, it is a good uh, substitute for the synthetic chemical compounds. And uh, there are some plant-based uh, 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 phytoconstituents like uh, flavonoids, lactones, uh, alkaloids, diterpenoids, glycosides, which exhibit uh, uh, extensive, I mean, uh, significant uh, immunomodulatory, antiviral, anti-inflammatory, and antioxidant activity in uh, various uh, scientific uh, articles, studies. Uh, and in one more addition to, one not eight uh, medicine herbs called Karpa uh, are predominantly used in Siddha system of medicine for treating certain diseases and as an antioxidant and immunomodulator, which were used extensively in case of dengue and HIV epidemics. The plants are also rejuvenated to boost the health and thereby prevent chronic diseases and reduce aging. Next slide, sir. So what is the mechanism of immunostimulation? So the primary target is the T or B uh, lymphocyte uh, stimulation. Uh, so there is an increase in the phagocytosis uh, by macrophages. Macrophages are the uh, first line of defense in the um, uh, host cell mechanism and the uh, granulocyte also display a central role in the immunostimulation and a stimulation of T lymphocyte, which can be uh, achieved either directly or to, uh, indirectly via macrophages. Um, and cytokine modulation caused by herbals. Uh, these are uh, herbal medicines on cytokines have shown greater potential and as an anti-inflammatory uh, action due to the um, inhibitory effect on interleukins 1, 6, tumor necrosing factor, and TNF, um, and uh, interleukin 8, and the boosting effect of interleukin 10, which has an antagonistic effect to the uh, pro-inflammatory cytokines. Next slide, sir. 
So what is the concept of immunomodulation in Siddha? As per the Siddha system of medicine, food is medicine and medicine is food. Unavi marindu and marindu unavi. That indicates that a proper diet and healthy lifestyle containing medicinal herbs are intrinsic elements that allows the body to remain healthy. The great saint, uh, uh, the great Tamil saint, uh, Thiruvalluva has insisted, insisted the uh, significance of diet as the cause of disease in his chapter called Marunda medicine. So as for the system of medicine, medicine uh, uh, food is medicine and uh, medicine is food. Um, and immunity is termed as one main siddha and it has a direct association with the uir tadukal, that is wily adal ayam, that is vada pitta kabam, uh, three um, humors and uh, seven udal tadukal, uh, body uh, tissues like a uh, Saram chenir, un kolpa, inba, mulai, suklam or stone them that nourishes the body. So the human beings are a subtle of love, with tadukal and udal tadukal, forming his or her strong physical and mind, in, uh, in resulting in a strong immune system. So as we know, immunity is uh, divided into three types, innate immunity, acute immunity, and uh, passive immunity. As per Siddha concept, natural immunity of the human body by birth is called ERK1 me. And its improvement with the help of intake of balanced food and medicines is called the CRK one way. And uh, uh, then the uh, physical change under the effect of seasons and uh, is called the Kala one way. So these are the uh, three main types as uh, as per the system of medicine. So if a individual is called healthy, uh, uh, individual called is healthy. If he possesses the equilibrium of state of doshas, that is three body, uh, body humors and acne, that is biodigestive fire and the others, tissues and physical constants and the malas, waste product of the body. So the body is firmly, as I told before, the body is firmly supported by the vada pitta kapha. So the abnormal and vitiated vadam causes the derangement of the immune system that produces diseases. So like uh, abnormal and vitiated pitta greatly disturb the digestion and metabolism leading to the development of diseases. And abnormal and vitiated uh, vitation of carbon greatly alter the immune system resulting in diseases. Likewise, a diminished state of doshas is not uh, capable of vitiating other tagus. So the total number of seven uh, physical constants as mentioned the Siddha literature, um, which are also uh, support and nourishes the body. So whenever the expression uh, or function of one of the tadu is impaired, the immune disturbance occurs and disease developed. So that's the principle actually. Uh, then the proper elimination of malas indicates the good health and any abnormality is caused uh, the disease development. Uh, likewise, actually, it is not visible here. According to Siddha uh, system, Vadama Pataita, Pitta Vanyai Kada, Sletamama, Siddhamai Tudaita. That means Vada is for, is for creation, Pitta is for prevention, and Kaba is for destruction. So, Pitta is mainly for prevention. That means it uh, is responsible for the immune function. So. Uh, if, whenever the derangement of, uh, derangement of kaba uh, occurs, it can be uh, rectified by the increasing oral humor, that is pitta humor. Automatically, the immunity will be developed. So that is the principle uh, in Siddha. Next, sir. So coming to Arati Gurdhiya Shunam. Uh, Arati Gurdhiya Shunam is a classical Siddha polyherbal formulation. It contains uh, five plants, namely Citrarate Alpinia officinarum, Pererate Alpinia galanga, and Adimadurum Glycerice glabra, and Tipili Pipalongum, and Talisabadri Abyss webiana. So it is mainly indicated in Siddha literature for immunocompromised disorders such as fever, respiratory infections, dropsy, eczema, and arthritis. It is um, mentioned in the classic Siddha literature, Siddha Proprietary of India, uh, 2014 edition. Next slide, sir. So these are the uh, phytoconstants and the mechanism of action of these herbs. So uh, in general, Alpinia galanga, uh, which has a high uh, kind, uh, amount of uh, flavonoids, like uh, quercetin, camphorol, isoramnitin, ram, uh, camphorite, galangin. So uh, actually, uh, like terpenoids and galanga were proved to have a broad spread, uh, spectrum antiviral activity and immunomodulatory activity and the inhibitory activity on pro-inflammatory mediates. And it is scientifically uh, reported to inhibit the replication of HIV. So uh, there are evidence for the Al Alpina galanga also. Uh, and uh, like the glycerisia glabra, which is uh, rich in flavonoid, 
content uh, like the uh, liquidin isoliquidin liquidigenin and uh, ramlo uh, liquidin and etc so in uh, acetyl muramyl peptide is a glycerase analog with the potential immunostimulating properties um, and um, glycerase gas acid how to be shown the uh, inhibit uh, have to shown the uh, inhibit the growth and cytopathology of numerous rna dna viruses and uh, another interesting thing is lictorase con uh, constant also ex exhibits a steroid like anti inflammatory property which is similar to the action of hydrocortisol there are lots of studies have been conducted in the covid uh, situation uh, regarding um, adimodium that is uh, glycerase glabra even chinese traditional medicine also there are lots of papers um, and uh, next is the Piperlongum, piperlongum, it's phytocompound constituents are piperine, methyl piperine, piperonarine, piperichin, acerin, etc. So uh, the main mechanism of action is it increases the total WBC content, bone marrow cell allergy, and the total antibody production. So uh, it is found to activate the macrophages. So that is the first line of defense from a host infection and the uh, phagocytic index, and it indicates the uh, immunostimulating activity. Next is the Alpinia officinarum. Like, uh, like I said, for Alpinia galanga, it also contains diterpenoids, steroid flavonoids. Uh, it actually helps to regulate the COX and non COX signaling pathways. As it is a cyclooxygenase enzyme, it is responsible for the formation of prostaglandins. So it inhibits the uh, formation of uh, prostaglandins. So it, it, it actually uh, Cox pathways, it actually uh, catalyzes the conversion of arachidonic acid to prostaglandin. So, uh, this uh, alpinia officinera, uh, phytoconstant in alpinia officinera, like galangin, helps to regulate the Cox pathway. And uh, AB subabiana also have potent inhibitors of uh, P, uh, prostaglandin synthetase. Next slide, sir. So, these are the um, scientific evidences. Um, regarding the uh, herbs of the uh, drugs of the Alpinia galanga, there are various studies have been uh, conducted to prove its immunomology and antiviral uh, act actions. Next slide, sir. So these are the pa papers. Next slide, sir. Ne Next slide, sir. So the antiviral activity of Arati Gurdanesuna with special mention to COVID-19. So the uh, phenyl, I will mention some of the Uh, polyphenyl pro uh, propanoid in Galangal shows potential inhibitor to SARS-CoV-2 against three target proteins, RBS, uh, to, uh, S, and um, uh, PDAC2 and uh, SARS-CoV-2 protease in molecular doping studies. Um, and uh, glycerin, which I have mentioned before, uh, exhibit antiviral uh, activity against SARS-CoV-2 and uh, uh, some other viral infections also. Mm, likewise, uh, Taxol and Bacadin 3 exhibit strong interaction with the targets of SARS CoV 2 and human uh, acid E2 in molecular docking. And Parsi uh, Taxol has the inhibitory activity of um, human immunodeficiency virus, HIV virus, and the human uh, breast cancer, and inhibitory action on the um, SSV virus and the Vero cells. Next slide, sir. So, with the constant, uh, with the constant increase in the number of cases and the potential possibility of health system across the state in countries getting over overwhelmed. So, what is the logical approach? So, what is the logical approach is to protect the unaffected population uh, should be aimed at boosting the immunity. So, this is where the potential uh, of traditional disciples like the Siddha need to be harnessed. Many of the bioactive principles present in the herbs are proven to be I mean, Arati Gurdjie Chuna are proven to be uh, the effective immunomodulators, antiviral, antioxidant, and anti inflammatory agents based on the pharmacokinetic of their bio, uh, bioactive compounds. And active principles like the glycerin, phenyl propanoid, hyperonic uh, acid, and bacadin 3 showed remarkable inhibitory activity against SARS CoV 2 in molecular docking studies as well. So, in general, Arati Gurdjie Chuna. Is a polyherbal decoction with the five uh, components, and each of them are in, in themselves strongly established herbal plants. And those synergistic activity might probably improve human immune response and lead the human body to healthiness. Next slide, sir. 
So coming to the Siddha part. So the therapeutic efficacy of the uh, drug is mainly based on the phytoconstants of the uh, ingredient, uh, phytoconstants present in the ingredient. So according to Siddha, the efficacy of drug is assigned upon the ingredients of taste fundamental theory and five elemental theory and its potency, that is virium and its actions, so unique characters, mahime. So the uh, drug used in the system were identified by five properties like the suvay, that is taste, virium, potency, gunam, character, river, class, and the mahime action. All these five properties are based on the five elements, that is panjagudams, that are present in the drug. So Siddha system equates COVID-19 to Habasura. Uh, slate uh, fever, it's a uh, synonym. Actually, uh, the symptoms of Habasura or Sledma cinema, fever, cough, throat pain, anosmia, and adusia, shortness of breath and fatigue. So, Siddha, in Siddha field, COVID 19 uh, can be con uh, is correlated with the Kabasuram, and in se uh, severe stages, it can be lead to Kabavada Suram and the uh, Sanibada Suram, which are the delirious stages. Uh, or... Next slide, sir. So, the Siddha concept about uh, concerns of Arati Gurdin Shunam. So in this table, describes the name of the drug and the its common name and the parts used and the actually uh, taste of the drug and uh, the five element perspective and the uh, humor theory and its action. So Alpinia galanga it is commonly known as greater galanga and the uh, rhizome are the most useful part. Uh, it has carp taste, that is acrid taste. So acrid taste is responsible to pacify the vitiated cover. So as I told before, Siddha system correlates, uh, it creates uh, the symptoms of uh, um, COVID-19 with the cover serum. So it automatically pacify and, uh, pacifies the vitiated cover. Likewise, uh, the uh, glycase glabra also pacifies the vitiated vadam and um, pitta humus because it has sweet taste and uh, it has a combination of earth and water. Uh, uh, that is a panjabudam. And its actions are tonic, emollient, and mild expectorant. And uh, uh, next to the piper longum, it, uh, it has also carp taste, uh, that is function taste, acrid taste. It pacifies the vitiated gubbum and the alpinia galanga, uh, likewise, is, uh, this also uh, pacifies the vitiated gubbum and abs webiana pacifies the vitiated gubbum. So most of the drugs are pacify the vitiated gubbum. So it can be recommended for the uh, management or as prophylactic measure uh, for um, uh, COVID-19 as per the Siddha concept. Even uh, I have shown the uh, evidence for uh, modern, uh, evidence from modern uh, articles also. Next slide, sir. So my point is, Siddha is a bundle of desired information that has to be uh, explored and uh, uh, implemented uh, for the uh, healthy, uh, maintain healthy well-being of the human being. So based on the available information from Siddha literature, proven scientific article, the trial drug Arate Gurdin Shunam can be given uh, for enhancing the immune system of the body and for prevention of COVID-19 infection. And the various phytochemicals present in the uh, Arate Gurdin Shunam will help in suppressing and curing the clinical symptoms associated with the COVID-19 infection. And more detailed studies has to be carried out for obtaining a scientific approach to this formulation and develop it as a viable uh, therapeutic alternative against COVID-19 infection. Uh, next slide, sir. So these are the references. Next slide, sir. Finally, thank you, sir. Thank you for the patience. I would like to express my uh, sincere gratitude to my great Dr. Shivaguma, sir, and my uh, director, Dr. Meena Gumari, ma'am, who uh, the constant support and encouragement for participating in this uh, knowledge festival. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was beautiful, very uh, deep and structured. Um, we also had the, uh, Dr. Meena Kumari here and uh, with our pre-talks. So uh, thank you for uh, your work. Just one question there because um, we will have to... Uh, go to to uh, the next paper uh, possibly but uh, uh, just as as you uh, told us there are so many uh, possibilities to um, 
to use these uh, Siddha or, or even Ayurvedic uh, formulations um, when it comes to dealing with, uh, with this whole pandemic. Uh, but do you know of, uh, of any challenges, how, how it might be um, uh, a problem to uh, implement these, uh, these kind of uh, formulations? Because we have so many guidelines by WHO, by uh, maybe other uh, institutions, governments uh, to, to follow. And uh, when you go away from those guidelines, uh, it might be seen as, um, you know, not okay against the protocol or whatever. Do you know of that? Do you know, can we just go out and say, take this uh, to, to help with, with the uh, COVID situation or do we have to really be careful with that? Okay, sir. Sir, so there are lots of scientific studies have already been conducted for various Siddha formulations like Kabasura uh, Gurunir, which are extensively used in the COVID uh, pandemic for assay prophylactic measure. So, and also there are um, you know, in vitro immunomodulatory activity studies are all, already carried out for um, medicines like uh, Kabasura Gurunir and um, Nilavebu Gurunir. Uh, there are lots of papers, papers uh, from uh, peer reviewed journals are there, sir. Great. So, so we, we have the knowledge, but um, of course, you, you, you probably don't know about the political background. This is just a question that comes up here uh, every so now and then. It's actually a simple uh, form of medicine uh, among the type of uh, um, um, Siddha medicines. It is easily uh, digestible. Kashayam, actually, it's a pedicose in Kashayam. Uh, Kyaram in uh, Ayurvedam, so it's a easily digestible. It has high uh, bioavailability and um, but it, it's the only drawback is it, uh, shelf life is only for three hours. So that is the uh, drawback of uh, decoctions. Yeah, that that that's so a, <laughs> that, that might be a drawback with with certain uh, you yes, know. Yes, sir. But um, <laughs> but uh, so. But it is, I, uh, Actually, it makes sense, right? It, it, it has to be fresh. It, ha it has to be uh, done uh, locally and regionally. All, all these things come together there, and it, it really makes sense. It's just that uh, we are living in, in a world where certain uh, conservation and, and uh, all, all these uh, type of uh, usage of chemicals has become so uh, uh, so all day, every day, normal, that uh, people just cannot imagine something that would uh, be uh, only for three, four days. So, but uh, really, Dr. Uh, Parvati, thank you very much uh, for your time, for your effort. Uh, this was, uh, we, we also had, uh, a, a paper on uh, basically single herb um, formulations uh, in Sida. Now we have a poly herb. So th okay, it's, gr so. it's great. We, we found out uh, a lot of new, uh, new things, new information. Thank you very much. And Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Yes. Um, and uh, Vinayak, what, what's... The next one, Dr. Ulaga Madhavan. And All right. We have one more formulation from from Siddha. So <laughs> great. No, I, I'm really happy about that. It's just for for viewers who might be uh, thinking why we are we are going uh, into these uh, ideas because we have experienced this. This is um, many times a, a political issue. If you can really do this, because now. Uh, these people, uh, all the doctors, experts working with us here, uh, presenting their papers, they have really great points. They uh, bring up their uh, uh, whole knowledge and uh, the reasoning why, but then um, there might be a full stop once you get to a political level where you would have to implement these ideas and really we want to 
uh, once this knowledge festival is over, uh, take out uh, uh, some of these important ideas to, uh, to try to get them to work at the governmental level because um, anything else is just uh, on, a, on a private kind of uh, basis. And uh, well, that's something everybody can do for themselves, but um, you know, we need governmental uh, uh, support to get these huge ideas uh, over to the people. So uh, now um, the next paper is a review on uh, pharmacological activities of uh, Injita and Karma, uh, which is uh, a Siddha immune boosting drug. And uh, um, this is Dr. Ulaga Madhavan, uh, who will uh, give us this presentation. Doctor, please go ahead. Good afternoon to all. My name is M. Ulaha Madhavan. I'm doing my internship in ATSVS Siddha Medical College, Munjurai, Kanyakumari District, Tamil Nadu. My topic is a review on pharmacological activities of Injitain Karpam, a Siddha immune using drug. Okay, let's get into the topic. Next slide. No yetcha valve, kuraivatta selvam, which means health is wealth. It's a famous old proverbial saying for a disease-free and healthy life. We do have natural resistance for diseases in our body, but there are some occasions it fails. Modern medical science advocates many therapies and nutritional supplements to enhance our immune system. But even thousand years ago, in our Siddha system of medicine, Siddhas have kipped us with a special pressure of therapy known as Karpamuri. In our Siddha literature, there are many Karpam medicines have been mentioned. Of them, Injitan, Injitain, a combination of ginger and honey, is a Karpam medicine which is simple for day-to-day -day intake. Okay, next slide. Again, the purpose of this presentation is to explore and express the benefits of this Karpam medicine in the light of modern studies. Okay, next slide. Karpam medicine. First, we have to know what is karpam. In Tamil, karpam in Badu, Udambinai, no Yurada Padi Vaitirand, Nandilagil Vaitirand, Narai, Tirai, Mupu, Yvatrayum, Pini, Ayavatrayum, Niku Adahum. Uh, okay, uh, what is karpam? Karpam medicine is said to prevent Narai, Tirai, Mupu, Pini, and keep the body in sound health. Okay, the poem which is mentioned about karpam medicine in Tirumandram is Karpathe Undal Kayam Aliadu, Karpathinale Karnalam Kailaye, Karpathinale Karnalam Sodhiye, Karpathinale Kalayum Katide. Okay, uh, what is Narai? Narai means braining, uh, Tirai means wrinkles, Mupu means disease. Uh, Mupu means uh, aging process, pini means disease, okay? Then next slide. Injitain, uh, this is a karpam medicine, one of the karpam medicines which are mentioned in our uh, Siddha literatures. Uh, Injitain is a combination of ginger and honey. Uh, the, this is the poem uh, which is mentioned about Injitain in Therayar Yamaha Venba uh, by the Therayar, one of our great Siddhas. Irundain uh, Alangara Meitayindru Niri Irundain Alangara Meid Irundain Nivi Ragasiyamai Nenma Udan Kalandu Nivi Ragasiyamai Nai. Uh, this is the poem mentioned about Injitain. Okay, one of the great Siddhas, Therayar himself, has followed this and testifies it for, uh, for its benefits. Uh, ginger, gingifer of Isnalis is made into small slices. The procedure of Injitain Karpam is ginger made, it, made into small slices and soaked in honey. Consuming this preparation daily for a period of time will make body free from Narai Tirai Mupa. Okay, next slide. And then get into the pharmacological activities of ginger. Uh, anti oxidative property of ginger, increased production of free radicals. Uh, uh, in immunity, we have to know the role or uh, function of antioxidants. Uh, uh, antioxidants. Uh, uh, Antioxidants, uh, which may decrease or uh, uh, stops the production of free radicals. Increase the production of free radicals results in oxidative stress that can lead to DNA damage. Uh, Shagul, it is the important uh, bioconstituent, has exhibited the most potent accident and anti-inflammatory properties in ginger, which can be attributed to the presence of alpha, beta, and saturated ketone moiety. 
then animal modeling showed that ginger significantly lowered induced lipid peroxidation and raised the levels of antioxidant enzymes together with serum glutathione okay next slide uh, and another one effect is the nk cell activation we know nk cell uh, this is natural killer cells nk cells are specific for the elimination of virus infected cells and mutated cells okay protection of ginger bioactive compounds which was most probably ginger art when this compound was in the blood circulation might entail better performance of the immune cells in the blood ginger art stimulating nk cells lysing activity the stimulation could be more specific to those related with the mechanism of nk cell activation such as th1 cells rules cytokines and interferon production in both mouse and human lymphocytes experiments nk cells were found to be more active in lysing lysing leukemic target cells in the presence of ginger extracts in vivo in mice or ginger bioactive compounds in vitro these are the nk cell activation effect of the ginger then next slide anti cancer effect ingredients like uh, uh, gingerol sagol paradol and ceramone these are the bio constituents uh, which uh, present in the ginger uh, these uh, bioactive components uh, exhibit the anti tumorogenic activities effective in controlling the extent of colorectal gastric ovarian liver skin breast prostate cancer uh, these uh, bioactive components uh, effective in controlling the extent of colorectal gastric ovarian liver skin breast prostate cancer okay then anti inflammatory effect of uh, ginger ginger extract can reduce the elevated expression of nfkb and the tissue tumor necrosis factor alpha in rats with liver cancer uh, this activation linked to a variety of inflammatory diseases including carcinoma atherosclerosis diabetes mellitus and aids next slide okay then uh, we have to know the uh, pharmacological activities of honey okay uh, anti accident effect of honey the proposed anti accident mechanism include free radical sequestration hydrogen donation metallic ion chelation flavonoid substrate action for hydroxyl and super peroxide radical actions also it has anti inflammatory effect anti bacterial effect against methicillin resistant staphylococcus epidermidis klebsiella pneumonia pseudomonas aeruginosa proteus mirabilis and it it also has anti mutagenic effects next slide immunomodulatory effect this is the important effect of honey immunomodulatory cytokines such as tumor necrosis factor alpha uh, interleukin 1 interleukin 6 and interleukin 10 boost activation and proliferation of red cells to induce phagocytic and lymphocytic activity triggering an immunomodulatory response honey honey was found to provoke stimulation to the immune system of the body to combat infection in rats this uh, it stimulates t lymphocytes and b lymphocytes and neutrophils in cell culture uh, b lymphocytes ultimately stimulate the uh, production of antibodies in primary and secondary immune responses against the thymus dependent and thymus independent antigens okay next slide it stimulates monocytes to release the cytokines such as tumor necrosis factor alpha interleukin 1 and interleukin 6 activating numerous aspects of immune response stimulatory action of honey towards leukocytes illustrates another action called respiratory burst this is the important one uh, in this process in this action glucose of honey is absorbed to produce H, uh, hydrogen peroxide hydrogen peroxide is uh, is the important leading constituent to stimulate the immune system Uh, it also delivers substrate to glycolysis to produce energy in uh, macrophages to allow them to perform immune modulatory function okay next slide anti diabetic effect uh, one question may rise uh, uh, honey may increase the blood sugar level okay Uh, the answer is uh, it also have anti diabetic effect proposed mechanism explains that hypoglycemic effects of honey may be through the role of honey in modulating the insulin signaling pathway a key component of insulin signaling is the p i3k and akt the effect of honey extracts on akt activated insulin signaling pathway in pancreatic cells was recently investigated under hyperglycemic hyperglycemic conditions so uh, definitely it have uh, anti diabetic effect okay then next slide okay here conclusion 
these studies affirm that enhancement of immune system and their efficacy in preventing disease by possessing anti-oxidative properties, NKCell activation and immune modulatory function. The exemplary benefits which have been brought to the light by these modern studies had been told by the sisters a millennium back. By their intuitive wisdom is an astonishing fact. We know very well that in the process of narai tirai mupu pini, uh, it means uh, uh, graying, uh, wrinkle formations, aging process, and disease, our immune system gradually loses its functional potency. A formulation that can prevent this process can definitely boost the performance of immune system. Therefore, we can conclude that such uh, such formulation taken in the appropriate manner will help mankind to live a life free of disease with potent immune function. Not only the uh, Inji Karpam, there are uh, many Karpam medicines are mentioned in our uh, ancient Siddha literatures. Uh, so uh, we can follow this uh, Karpam Murai. Uh, we, we will live the uh, disease, uh, disease free life. Okay, then next slide. Uh, thank you. Uh, I would like to thank my uh, Dr. J. Jabba Singh, uh, Deputy Medical Superintendent of our college and Principal of our college, uh, Dr. T. Mohan Raj, Correspondent of our college, and my friends uh, M. M. Varsharoji and A. Ashad Basha. Thanks to all. Thanks to Open Attempt team. Thank you very much, Doctor. You, this was really, a, really a, a very um, structured and nice one. Uh, plus. This is uh, something that uh, can be easily uh, taken into account in, in European countries, in, in America, in everywhere, basically. It's, it's uh, um, easier to approach uh, than certain maybe uh, herbal formulations uh, that are very uh, much just found in certain parts of the world. So thank you very much. We uh, must move on. Uh, we have people waiting for uh, the discussions. So uh, uh, we will probably not yeah. take a break. Correct. Yeah. And I think oh. Dr. Nambi is thank here. You, Dr. Pradeep is here. Um... All right. So. We have um, for our discussion round, um, Dr. Narayana Nambi, uh, who uh, was with us uh, for a nice pre-talk. Uh, if you have not seen that, just go to our uh, YouTube channel and um, see the talk for yourself. Then we um, have Professor uh, Dr. Pradeep um, Nair, who also, has been with us uh, before, and uh, uh, we are uh, so just. Uh, Dr. Ajitesh, I think from yoga, also he's. All here. right, Dr. Aj uh, Dr. Ajitesh is um, also with us, um, and uh, yes, so so we are set. We will be going through. Um, one or two question rounds. So I will be just uh, uh, putting out one question, then I will go to each of, uh, of you and uh, maybe you can give us uh, your idea, uh, the, the concepts behind it uh, according to uh, your system of, of medicine. And uh, uh, by that, making clear for everyone what may be the differences between these systems in those points or what may be uh, a certain common ground where we can uh, meet, meet each other. So uh, it's just um, basically the, the title of, of uh, this part of the uh, day is um, understanding the immune disorders. So I would like to just really uh, in a basic form, know from each of you what is considered as immune disorder, because there, there may be many disorders. Some things may be uh, looked at uh, as disorder in, in a certain system and uh, just being seen as normal in a, in a different system. But uh, 
a, a disorder of uh, your immune system. So Dr. let's start with uh, Dr. Narayan Nambi, maybe. Um, uh, and maybe you can give us just the overall look on the uh, disorders of the immune system. So far Ayurveda is concerned, the immune disorders can be visualized in a different perspective. Uh, it expected to be have a multi-level, multi-area center issue in, uh, from Ayurveda. Uh, in a simple way, Ayurveda says that uh, what and all we consume, normally the edible things, which is of having a heterogeneous in nature, with the help of a, a fire, Agni, the digestive fire, bodies try to convert that heterogeneous into a homogeneous part and keep as a part of the body or dissolve in the stream. In case that Agni fails, maybe due to many reasons, that if Agni fails to uh, do that, maybe there may be some delay or there may be some, many reasons can happen. So there is a, a thing that is neither part of the body nor, um, nor in the intermediate phase, nor it's, so body what try to do at that moment is you try to expel it out. Person may feel, uh, so that can be the preliminary immune response. It is a defense response. So body what does normally when we eat some food and that food has something else to do, uh, normally it should part of the body, but it doesn't happen. Normally we feel had a distension of abdomen, we may vomit or we may have diarrhea, whatever. So this is the level one. Then if it's not able to do, uh, body is not able to, if we are not permitting, uh, body to vomit it off or to have a loose motion. So the level two of immune response will happen. Maybe in the first stage, uh, most of the time, this is very unique to Ayurveda that, you know, somebody is having vomiting, <laughs> check it whether it is a part of a disease or it is a part of immune response. Maybe uh, anti-emetic drugs could be the first choice for a modern medical doctor. For an Ayurvedic person, it may not be the first choice. He may be looking at the, whether it is a body's natural response to pushing out. This is quite very unique to most of the traditional knowledge systems. Um, that's part one. Then secondly, if not able to do, then body may try to diffuse this, uh, this thing in different areas, may have a level two of immune responses. Like that, there are, I can explain, I can explain even more, but uh, at this moment, I want to, to as a conversation, introduction to conversation, this is the primary thing Ayurveda try to look into and try to perceive in the context of immune disorders. Great, uh, thank you. Uh, so um, let's uh, jump to uh, Dr. Pradeep, uh, who, also has some uh, time limitations. So uh, when, whenever you, your, your time is up, just, uh, just tell us and uh, you're, you're done. But uh, for now, just maybe from uh, naturopathy yoga uh, point of view, what, what is an immune disorder? So uh, this right point of time when we speak about immunity because it is one of the most abused term in the past two years. Um, say and uh, naturopathy per se from the beginning or even now during the entire COVID-19 pandemic uh, we don't regard something as abnormal uh, in the part of the world so we regard the abnormality as a part of normalcy so that is a basic concept uh, with which we operate and we don't uh, basically name any diseases we uh, go with the concept of unity of disease and unity of cure so that is a basic uh, guiding principle in yoga and naturopathy Firstly, and if you see uh, in a yoga concept, we lost you, Doctor, for a moment. Doctor Pradeep, you uh, froze 
unfortunately lost him in the middle of the sentence. That's um, okay then while he uh, is trying to come back, hopefully. Um, we go uh, over to Dr. Ajitesha. Uh, maybe you can jump in for, <laughs> for Dr. Pradeep and uh, go on with that. Or, or, um, sorry, I got a oh, oh, or yeah. we, we keep it going. Really we, we were just thinking maybe we give you some time by, by uh, bringing uh, Dr. Ajitesha in. But uh, just yeah. go, go on. No, 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 we thought we lost you, that's why. Yeah, I got a power crash around here yeah, suddenly. We are in India. <laughs> yeah. So uh, once you say like something like that, so we operate with the concept of unity of disease and unity of cure, where we don't per se name any diseases. And same with yoga philosophy also, where uh, never a textbook of yoga spoke about any disease, uh, name of a disease, maybe Prameha, which is called diabetes in modern medicine, or any kind of immune disorders for that matter. It always specified about how to reach that optimum wellness and health. So health can be a different perspective for different social contexts. For a rich man, health can be being in complete sophistication. And for a poor person, it is just about having an energy to do his own activity every day to day life. So the perspective differs from social context, but refers from socioeconomic context. So basically, naturopathy works with that kind of philosophy where uh, we look into the person's ability to cope uh, in a particular given situation, whether it is an immune disorder, whether it's a cancer, or whether it's any kind of diseases. It is his ability to cope and bring in the maximum needed vitality. So in naturopathy, all the disorders, we look for uh, three reasons. Uh, one is lowered vitality. The vitality is, as I told, the ability to cope. The second one is abnormal composition of blood and lymph. Uh, which is a kind of a byproduct of your lowered vitality. So if you're if you're having a cancer or if you have a, a cellular systemic erythematosis, it doesn't mean that every one of you are going to uh, get that kind of symptoms. Uh, it, it is very subjective. One person may cope up with cancer very well, will and come out, and other person uh, cannot cope up with cancer and come out of at that point of time. So uh, it is abnormal composition of blood and lymph as well as um, accumulation of morbid matter in the body. Uh, it can be the morbid matter in the brain or it can be morbid matter in your vessels or your organs, wherever it may. So this is the basic concepts where we operate uh, in any kind of disease as well. Yeah, do I think that. Very good. Be before we go uh, over, uh, just one thing. In naturopathy, do you, do you have, just for understanding uh, the issue, do you have names for for different diseases in that sense uh, are you saying this is cancer this is uh, a cold this is covid or is it just that that the kind of it's it's always the same basically just in with different faces for uh, every system of medicine they have two schools one is old school of practitioners another one is new modern school of practitioners who just uh, discard their own uh, old school of practitioners, basically, and in Ayurveda or any system of medicine, they have that kind of separation. Um, but uh, naturopathy, there are a group of physicians who just looks into the same modern medical textbooks and operates on symptom management. And you can see people practice uh, specific acupuncture or diet therapy as a specialist practice, as you can see over Austria also. Uh, and where there is another, another old school practitioners who don't name any diseases per se, because ultimately the treatment is going to be the same, whether you are coming with a cancer or you are coming with a fever, we are going to operate with the same philosophy. So ultimately, we want to accommodate that healing process. Like Dr. Narayana B has rightly put out that vomiting is not a, a bad thing for us. Vomiting is something which body is pushing something outside, which is not supposed to be there inside the body. So maybe the terms differ from system to system, but indigenous systems of medicine operates with such kind of philosophy. Yeah. So we, I personally don't believe in naming a disease and putting an over-diagnosis tag over the a patient's brain that will be detrimental for the prognosis. So I believe in prognosis rather than diagnosis. Right, right. Thank you. So no, because it's it's uh, uh, pretty much maybe over specialization going on nowadays. Also with the modern medicine, we have um, uh, smaller and smaller parts of the body being specialized on, and uh, and more and more 
diseases happening with more and more names. So we need more books to, to talk about them. But what I understand what you are saying about different schools of, of thought. So thank you for that, Dr. Ajitisha. Uh, let's get into it now. Thanks for waiting. Yeah, yeah. okay. Uh, firstly, I'm grateful to you people. You have invited me for this uh, discussion. Thank you. Uh, and now with respect to uh, yoga concept, See, even, uh, I completely agree with the, uh, Dr. Pradeep. So he already mentioned, like in yoga philosophy, uh, there is no particular name of any particular disease. So even it may be immune, uh, immune response related to that, or it, for that matter, any kind of, there is no particular name for any health issues in when we look into yoga philosophy. But uh, when we look into the uh, Hatha Yogi concepts, especially when we look into Hatha Yoga Pradipika, Gherenda Samhita. So in those classical texts of yoga, they have mentioned uh, in a broad sense, they have mentioned a, a particular diseases. But anyway, with respect to immune responses, see yoga, what considers is uh, anything which is not self, means which is not related to our body. So that is actually, it's a foreign body and it considers it has to be removed. So by the different practices or, uh, or different pra uh, practices of uh, yogic limbs, it tries to remove with whatever is not essential, whatever is not required for the body. That is one thing. So when it comes to the autoimmune disorders, so the feelings or the emotions, or, or in broad sense, what we say, Arisha Dwargas. Okay. So when we develop such kind of things, so in us, so that leads to autoimmune disorders, like the a body considers the same body's part itself as the, uh, uh, like a, a foreign man body and it tries to remove that. So in this sense, so when we broadly look into yoga subject, even though there is no particular name or any particular response. So that kind of uh, things in the yoga sutras or uh, yoga philosophies, but in a broad sense, we can consider as anything which is not self. So when that enters to the body, so uh, it creates a kind of response to remove that. Very good, thank you. So. Um... So what you're saying is, I mean, is, is there uh, in in that uh, yoga sense, is there a, 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 the immune system, or is it is it just the body? J just like we we talked before, is there a definition for immune system and uh, enemies coming in, or is it uh, just always m making the balance? always yeah of course it is like a balancing yeah right right okay so uh because uh, this is when, when we talked uh, also with other uh yoga experts here um as as um, our viewers could uh understand yoga is unity is is coming together of energies of of everything basically so uh in a way you would have to uh, become one with that enemy, actually, right? Yes, yes, exactly. I mean, uh, so so in in that sense, that there is not this way of modern medicine way to shoot at at uh, the enemy. But no, 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 nothing like uh, I completely agree with uh, Narayan Nambi, Doctor Narayan Nambi. So as he, he rightly said. See, here uh, the yoga completely aligns with the Ayurveda. So here what we are doing is we are not any attacking the foreign body. But instead what we are doing is we are actually stopping the supply of food for the development of any external, external body. Like it may be a virus, it may be a bacteria. So when we stop the food, it may be in the form of fasting. It may be in the form of improving our agni. 
so when we stop the food for the development or when we stop the development of congenial atmosphere for the development of that virus or that bacteria whatever it may be so then automatically it just yeah vanishes right. from there so we are not attacking we are not killing them right i understand thank you very much so let's uh go go to the to the second um uh second uh part of of this question to to uh dr narayan anandi um who uh maybe can tell us uh from the ayurvedic sense so um are there uh any kind of um you know you told us there is there is no um no basic understanding of uh of a disorder here, but um, we we found out that Ayurveda is so full of um, you know full of um, definitions of situations, definitions of uh, uh, and, and guidelines for uh, everything in life, so that your body works correctly. So basically there there must be uh, some situations where it is not working correctly so uh, can you give us a, a few um, examples of um, situations and how they can be handled um, that we could call disorders of of the immune system just just to uh, have an idea as someone who, who is totally outside of Ayurveda, uh, how this system works. What, what do we look at and say, this is uh, not in balance, uh, this is uh, not the way it should work, and this is how we would treat that. As I mentioned before, the level one were, uh, it is a level one of immune response where body tried to uh, push things out and where we doesn't need any medicine. We may have to adjust our lifestyle. We may have to change our food pattern, at least, at least not to disturb. That, that's the principal thing. The next situation happens, the level two happen is that when we have a, a homogeneous thing received either through orally or through externally too, body will try to convert that into a homogeneous, from heterogeneous to homogeneous, if, the, if it fails. Uh, so, because there may be many reasons to get failed, but one of the reasons to get failed is uh, due to the mismanagement of the Agni or the status of Agni or the digestive fire is impaired. So the, that moment, that content which supposed to be get digested could be converted into an undigested form in Ayurveda called as Amam. It is again one of the precursor or for the development of an immune response. So body have a small amount of Amam. It may be in the gut, mostly in the gut in the beginning. And this content will be waiting just like a yoga person told. Body try, we give, we may give a fasting, we may give whatever the method by which we, we push Agni to burn it. If it fails again, so this Amam, ama, which is in, described in Ayurveda, could be the primordial, primordial thing of immune response. And maybe that is the reason why the first chapter of uh, Chikitsa, first chapter of Nidanam, in most of the Ayurvedic books explained about a disease named Jwara or a fever. And this fever, basically an immune response, a response to immunity. And that chapter is the most elaborated chapter in all the three major classical books, Charaka, Shushuda, or Vakpada Samhita. So that itself shows the uh, the potential of understanding the immune response in the system and as you rightly mentioned there are a lot of protocols there are a lot of standard methods how we handle this 
this armor in the system where what type of things to be given whether we should give something to appetizer something or the, shall we give some decoctions or shall we give some milk ghee there are so many varieties of possibilities of intervention including diet lifestyle has been mentioned in that chapter so in that perspective if we want to speak about the immune disorder the chapter 1 of samhida the fever the chapter of fever is the best and the best example we can get very interestingly uh, while uh, in one book it is very interestingly says that this is started when we started living out of the forest <laughs> he is saying the the mythologically the story was telling because this books were written in uh, around few hundred bc huh? so they were telling that when human being was living in the forest uh, he is a part of the forest generally he is really tuned with the nature so immune system is always uh, you know continuously interaction with external so doesn't have much challenge but when human race started living in a society like a wife children like a family or in a, it's called gramyam like a village uh, like like a cluster all the problem starts it's really true too so immune response is also a by product of improper communication from inner sense to outer nature so if we have a continuous interaction with the outer nature with the internal environment then there is no need of immunity actually but it 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 happens because we have to be continuously in connect i think i'm answered to your point yes absolutely thank you very much that that was just a, basically a second part to the first question because you know we we um we have to uh make this content in a way that is really uh, approachable by everybody without any uh, uh you know uh, understanding of of the uh the whole concept before that so uh thank you for that it's really uh, important for our viewers to understand um this uh, you know doctor internet will not work that uh fine with ayurveda or siddha or this is really no really because many people are just it's like with let's say astrology you know nowadays you have these uh, kind of the cheap astrology where you just this is my son this is what will be the next 10 years it's not happening like that if if you really want to be serious about that you probably will have to go deeper and and just uh, you cannot look at your skin there is a, a a red dot or something and this means uh, i'm going to to die of of this or that you know so we have to teach uh, instead of intra internet we have to teach them intranet yes yes that's true that's uh, that's <laughs> i guess what, internet, internet. what the yoga part would be about but uh, uh so th that was just uh, uh for the first part so i will start the second round basically with uh, uh dr pradeep because as i said probably he might have to uh leave us a little sooner but we have a nice question coming from uh, the social media um it's something that we have been uh, hearing many times before and uh during this week also it's the autoimmune uh, diseases um uh, and uh, for many people it's uh, kind of hard to understand what is happening there uh and also with this question uh it's saying uh, why is our body and body attacking our own system in these cases so uh, what is uh the idea from a naturopathic uh, uh point of view dr pradeep if you can thank you um yeah i completely agree with uh, dr narend and b as well so uh, i want to put some concept even uh, with the social media question which just came uh, which was just posted by dr vinayak basically uh, why our own cells affects our own uh, body and specifically immune system is not that simple to understand then we could have not waited for these many vaccines to come and ruin many lives it's very complex and it behaves in a very different way for different person and that is what we understood and it is like 
over a period of time only the names of the diseases are changing but the viruses bacteria and all are still existing once upon a time it was poliomyelitis now it is non polio related myelitis so there is only difference what we have tried and achieved over a period of time and with due respect to all those scientists who have been contributed uh, behind those vaccines and things like that definitely it might have uh, saved a lot of people who uh, really needed it uh, but a blanket supplementation for that is not necessary uh, because i told uh, immune system is not that simple to understand just with a shot we can get away with any kind of uh, process so coming back to the question of uh, why our own cells is being attacked by our own immune system basically so basically our body has two functions uh, one is to reproduce reproduce in the sense uh, the growth the growth of our uh, individual cells like all of us sitting over here with handsome faces it's all the conglomeration of cells it is the face is a cell the skin is a cell the hair is a cell so it is the basic structure and unit of the body is cell and every cell like what we have as respiration um digestion each cell has its own individual functions like respiration digestion transportation and uh, removing debris from the body and that one function of the body uh, of each cell is uh, growth or reproduction the another one function is uh, protection so these are the two cardinal uh, function of a cell so when you look into this uh, whenever there is a conducive atmosphere like dr jitesha has told here when there is a conducive atmosphere that means you are happy about even you have a uh, breast cancer but you are not worried about the breast cancer because you you are okay with your body process doing well the quality of life you are not into the ventilator per se so you are functioning properly like any other person and even if you are there is a mastectomy or one breast is removed but still you are intact your femininity is intact so when you are in that position you are in a very conducive atmosphere both mentally and physically your body will function towards growth so at that point of time our own systems will not be affecting our own uh, cells like our immune immune systems will not be affecting our own cells but when you are in a very stressful situation that flight or fight mechanisms what we call in physiology when you are in a stressful atmosphere like you are haunted by vaccines you are haunted by bacteria you are haunted by media you are haunted by politicians you are haunted by doctors and you are haunted by a medicalized society when you are in such a atmosphere you repeatedly your body is functioning for protection and the protection to what extent we need we don't know and body also cannot decide because it is all called epigenetics like in my last talk i just spoke how much the environment is putting your body that your body in the sense your cells into pressure when your cells are into tremendous pressure your growth will be sidelined that will be taken the second part whereas protection is a primary responsibility of uh, one of the cardinal function of our body so all the protection genes are getting activated and your body is continuously inflamed and when your body is continuously inflamed when you are healthy enough it will not be that bothersome for you and there itself the first thing which is uh, which will happen that is leaky gut uh, which is called uh, dysbiosis of your gut bacteria and which will there on it will start with flight of obesity and then obesity will leads to uh, a kind of a cascade of reactions mm -hmm. similar with uh, autoimmunity something like the similar pathway your body is over reacting to the over pressure which is given from the external atmosphere like there is a term which is coined intervention is not needed intervention is something what we need so how much medicalization we need that boundary we should demarcate especially the physicians should know how how what is the boundary for us to intervene in a patient's life uh, should we allow them to intervene themselves rather than intervening on their lives so here when it is up to us whether we want to activate our protection genes or whether we want to activate our growth genes that it is depending upon how holistically we are providing an environment so that is what is the answer for any kind of immune diseases if you want to classify over there thank you very much so uh, just um, i mean uh, with with our guests uh, here and uh, most of the guests actually uh, we have had uh, on there is not too much uh, as i said uh, playing doctor internet and just looking up certain uh, symptoms and uh, just knowing exactly what's happening but um here i just before going on uh i just want to give everybody uh, also an idea of uh what modern medicine would uh would understand when when it comes to immune disorder at least what let's say wikipedia uh understands um Uh, from a modern medicine uh, point of view so uh, an immune disorder 
is a dysfunction of the immune system. So these disorders can be characterized in several different ways, by the components of the immune system affected, by whether the immune system is overactive or underactive, by whether the condition is congenital or acquired. According to the International Union of uh, Immunological Societies, more than 150 primary immunodeficiency diseases, PIDs, have been characterized. However, the number of acquired immunodeficiencies exceeds the number of PIDs. So it has been suggested that most people have at least one primary immunodeficiency due to redundancies uh, in the immune system, though many of these are never detected. So um, the thing is, uh, like maybe I said before, um, once you start to go after uh, certain uh, symptoms, uh, you will find some. And if you, if you just um, basically take a standard model of, of a human body or, or, or how it should be, then probably you will find uh, many names or many situations that just are not uh, optimal. But uh, these might be um, very personal or very, uh, very uh, maybe uh, different faces of the same thing, uh, let's say. And that, that is what I understand our guests are, are saying here, that um, it, it's always basically the same system, but uh, with different, uh, in different shapes, with different... Uh, uh, properties and um, and in in different situations. So we'll have to uh, get all those uh, components into play to understand what is actually going on. And uh, in this case, in the way modern medicine has been trying to categorize it is that we basically gave name uh, gave names to symptoms. So this is uh, to, for, for understanding what we are talking about. Um, so thank you for that. We go on to uh, Dr. Ajutisha. Uh, so what's the uh, uh, viewpoint of, of yoga, yoga therapy on uh, the autoimmune uh, diseases? You, you just went uh, into that shortly, but maybe you can go deeper on that. Yeah. Uh, here, uh, our immune system attacks our own body cells, so that's called as autoimmune disorders. So here, what, what exactly is happening is, uh, according to yoga, we have to be like uh, balanced, okay? Uh, that homogeneous state has to be maintained. So whenever this homogeneous state is disturbed, so that leads to like mistakenly immune system considers the body cells as the like foreign bodies and it tries to attack and it tries it tries to protect our own body so it feels it feels like that so why it happens is so according to i can take up the example of ahimsa so in yoga sutras uh, yamas so in that the first itself is ahimsa so ahimsa is non violence so treating everyone treating the surroundings treating ourselves without any himsa, without any violence, like unique. So that is the condition of homogeneous state. So whenever that is disturbed, so whenever we develop a kind of hatredness, we develop a kind of violent nature, so then that leads mistakenly. So that kind of uh, state leads to this type of autoimmune disorders. That was, that's what we can say. So uh, is there, uh, are there different, uh, so, or do you have to deal with them in your daily uh, practice? Uh, is, are there any people that might come to you and, and you see these kind of imbalances in them? And uh, can, can you give us maybe, uh, uh, in that case, an example of what? Uh, you maybe have seen and what has been done with them? 
Yeah, so absolutely here, the uh, prime importance are to be given to follow yamas and niyamas. For example, it may be ahimsa or it may be satya, truthfulness. Why I'm saying that see, satya, see, always telling the truth. See, in case if you have lied something, any, lied to anyone, then that causes a kind of, see, in, uh, indirectly causes a kind of stress in you. So always you have to maintain that. So without knowing, unknowingly, that creates a kind of stress inside you and that disturbs our that homogeneous state. So for that matter, what see simply when uh, when I do a kind of a therapy, so what I suggest to people is, see along with all the other yogic techniques, I strongly suggest them to follow Ahimsa. So that gives that gives a very good result. Okay, that that's good. So uh, that that sounds, you know. Uh... Maybe uh, in, in a world, uh, especially in, uh, in the Western world, in a highly, let's say, industrialized world, um, we, have, uh, we, we have become, um, you know, uh, we, we have been uh, getting used to, to lying, actually, you know, because this is part of winning, as we say, right? And so for for getting ahead for being a winner you need to be able to lie and so uh, you not only lie uh, about your capabilities or uh, what you have or what what you present but over time you might start lying to yourself right so possibly uh, i mean uh, i i do not want to overwhelm some people with some kind of esoteric ideas maybe here, but uh, everybody can feel for themselves. One, once your life is too full of lies um, and, and in, in, a, in, in the industrial world, as I said, it's so normal. You, you live on credit, you know, you, you, you are spending money that you don't have. Uh, you are living in a house that you cannot afford. You, you might be doing a job that you're not really qualified for. You might have a title that is not really what represents you. So, uh, so it's, it's such a huge, you are pretending to love somebody you're living with, which might not be the case anymore. You might, all these things add up uh, uh, and uh, they, they make a, a huge burden on, on you. And uh, I think even for, um, for those people who might be rolling their eyes and saying, you know, I mean, this is stupid or something, even those people deep inside, I, I guess they, they feel like this is, not, this is not comfortable. This is not uh, nice, you know? Just that, and I, I, I uh, want to just uh, reiterate uh, re this, this idea that if it does not feel nice, if it does not feel good, there is a reason for that. And your body, your mind is, is there to, to feel things the way that is good for you, right? So if it's tasty, uh, then, then it's... So, I mean, uh, th these, are, these are some... some interesting ideas that maybe this kind of society um, goes towards more and more autoimmune systems because of all the lies that we are living, maybe uh, just as part also misbehaving uh, in, in other parts uh, against ourselves, you know, living against yourselves uh, from the outside uh, makes your body makes your uh, uh, your system work against itself from from the inside. So uh, thanks a lot for that. I I, I don't want to um, take too much uh, air of, of out of this uh, discussion. Let's go to uh, Dr. Narayanan uh, Nambi, who maybe can tell us from the uh, Ayurvedic. Of course, uh, you took us into into that corner and told us about. Uh, the point of view of uh, Ayurveda, but what about the the autoimmune thing that is that is going on from the Ayurveda? Is it that uh, you have patients um, maybe with with these uh, disorders, and 
what is um, the way you, uh, as an Ayurvedic doctor, would handle this situation? Of course, we understood it's very different from person to person. But as a general guideline, uh, Dr. Narayanan, what would you say is, uh, is the way you, you go about it? Fundamentally, the problem in the autoimmune disease, as we all know that the cells are trying to distract the own cells. The intelligence comes from misunderstanding between each other. They are, we are together, we are working for uh, collective. So there is a collective transmission of knowledge between the cells and in the whole body. From the moment when the first uh, cell when it comes to few trillions or hundred trillions of cells, there is a collective connectivity which try to expand, evolve, progress in the life. In the journey of the life, it may perish also in some time, but there is a collective perceptionality and generally the idea is that not to distract each other. But when the moment comes, when they're able to find the enmity, enmity between other cells, which means that there is a huge change in that. One of the fundamental mistakes that happens in, uh, in that, according to Ayurveda, is due to the ama. That is the undigested thing which is accumulating. But this, this changes the whole platform in the whole body. So this is one point in the context of uh, autoimmune disease happens. It may be psoriasis, it may be autoimmune thyroiditis, it may be bronchial asthma. Uh, there are so many autoimmune diseases I can enlist it. But most in most of the cases, the commonest thing what we find is there is a presence of ama and there is some disturbance in the Agni. So irrespective of the disease manifestation, uh, whether it is asthma, whether it is psoriasis, Ayurvedic primary focus will be to correct Agni and burn out this ama. So any, any case, so we'll, we'll give medicine first to ignite the Agni as best, as best as possible, then try to burn this ama or Remove this ama through different uh, panchakarma and other procedures. That's the first part of it. Second part of it is to reassign the body or to re-aware of the body that there should not be further such things happen. Uh, what I mean to say is that there are set of uh, set of cells are under this type of autoimmunity. After the purification, uh, in Ayurveda, it is called Brahmana Chikitsa. That means nourishing in the terminologically, literal translation is like nurturing the cells. But it's not only that, it is re-aware, making the cells to re-aware that we are all same. So that is the important aspect of uh, thing what we do in Ayurveda, in short. Just, just to, to uh, understand that, and we are at, at the final, uh, stage of, of this uh, um, discussion. Uh, so <clears throat> now someone comes to you, they have a bronchial asthma and, uh, and uh, it might be a severe uh, uh, disease for them. It might be uh, really burdening uh, on, on their system. So <clears throat> now obviously they, they have this um, whole ama. you have to get rid of basically you uh, and and they are absolutely uh, okay with all that they understand what you're saying they are willing to change their lifestyle they're willing to go all the way still um, in that moment they are really suffering so what is the approach when there's an episodic nature when there's a severity of the disease manifestation definitely we will address that because it is the real agony, it is the real pathetic situation to the patient. So we'll address with that according to the uh, dosha manifestations. Uh, for example, the person is having severe breathlessness, we may use different prescriptions, which may be an expectant so that mucus can come out. 
or it may be strengthening the muscles or uh, expanding the trachea. Of course, there are a lot of set of medicine. That's one side. But once these episodes comes down, it's not that the disease is disappeared. Right. The pathological uh, entity still remains in the system, which has to be addressed later. Otherwise, it comes again. So that's the second point where I mentioned the first point that AMA, addressing AMA, addressing Agni become very important in the practice. Right. So uh, just to conclude here, um, what we, uh, what I read from uh, the uh, modern medicine uh, point of view, uh, the, the symptoms and the naming of that and the categorizing and, and trying to assign certain chemicals or certain um, uh, medicines to, to those uh, issues to, to uh, get rid of them. That's basically just uh, the, uh, that very urgent part that uh, Ayurveda is um, looking at. But Ayurveda is at the same time always uh, trying to see the, the uh, root of the of this whole tree and is saying these, these symptoms are, uh, are there. And uh, if they are severe, we have uh, our tools to deal with them. But uh, if not, we can uh, get the body to a state where it can handle everything without any issues. But it's not that uh, Ayurveda or Siddha or yoga or any of this system is actually saying, you know, you're left on your own. And uh, if, if there is a, a severe situation, you, we, we cannot do anything for you. There, there can be uh, things done. But again, uh, as we can conclude here, uh, there is no list of of names you can go and buy products for, you have to get your whole system checked by uh, a, a real professional, by, by someone who has the real knowledge. Um, and there are endless tools to find out what your issue actually is. We have had some papers, some, some discussions here where people told us different ways of, of uh, for diagnosis, but um, then you can be uh, put maybe on some, uh, on some medicine, on some drugs, but most of all on some behavioral changes, on some lifestyle changes and so on. So um, this is- I would say that uh, Ayurveda has the unique way of customization. Right. As you rightly mentioned, we always try to have a customized way. And of course, there are some basic protocols, but these basic protocols are basically very really simple. But as a clinician, when we look at the patient, there are a lot of customization is needed based on the prognosis of the situation. Right. Uh, it's like uh, Messi doesn't go to a Nike or Adidas shop to buy a shoe. I think in Nike or Adidas, they will uh, prepare a view to Messi directly based on his food curvature. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's, similar way. It's just that when you have such a hierarchical uh, kind of society, then then people accept someone like Messi can can have everything. But mm -hmm. you know, everyday people should just. Uh, <laughs> take the next shoe and, you know, hurt their feet for, for a year or two. But really, actually, this is a very important point. Uh, the, the whole pharmaceutical industry is going towards personalizing uh, the, the, the medicine. And this is the, the, the latest hype that is going through the uh, medical world. And as we can see, Basically, all, all these uh, ancient medical systems have been uh, working in a, in a highly personalized form forever. And uh, there was no concept of uh, standardized uh, medicine at all. Uh, it, I mean, there is pr uh, probably not even any kind of, uh, pr uh, you know, standardized yoga or even uh, you know uh, any kind of 
uh, regime or diet or whatever there is always has to be uh, even with uh, the, the SIDA guidelines, which are very uh, harsh in certain ways, we found out that uh, even those cities said, you know, this is for 90% of people. There are people born in different states, you know, people are coming here with different uh, ab abilities, different uh, bodies, different structures, and uh, yes, there is a standard line, but no, not for everyone. There might be people who are working uh, at their finest when they go absolutely against all the guidelines, but we would have to uh, assess that. We would have to go through the procedures and find out this is not a guessing game. This is not just throwing, you know, a, a dart at something and, and see what sticks. It's, and, and uh, unfortunately, many times, this is the experience people have nowadays with especially modern medicine. It's just like uh, uh, you go there and uh, the, the doctor has, uh, because of the, the kind of the systems we have, uh, maybe 10 minutes uh, top uh, at, at their best 10 minutes for you and they have to go through whatever your issue might be and then you know uh, most of the time give you uh, the uh, medication that is uh, you know up to date at that time you know that the most uh, most used uh, medication for for that kind of issue and it's really very vague sometimes because <clears throat> of course you don't have the time and it's not even that uh, most of the doctors are not uh, maybe good or or even interested in their patients they just don't have the time and uh, they uh, they they don't have this system behind it they have to work differently so for for all <clears throat> the viewers uh, in the west who are used to go at, go to a doctor and have a certain code assigned to them that will give them this medicine or that medicine and hopefully they will uh, get well soon uh, this is not how uh, ayurveda siddha naturopathy uh, uh, yoga uh, well, TCM or whatever uh, works, they, they have to feel your pulse, they have to smell your, your body, basically, they have to look at your, uh, your shape, and, uh, you know, all the senses, basically, they have to sense you to know who and what you are and uh, what is, is happening inside you. So, uh, with uh, having said that, I, I want to uh, thank you all for uh, being part of this and uh, giving us your, your knowledge and uh, we'll <clears throat> put that out on the internet for everyone to um, have, a, have a consulting uh, moment with, with these great people. And uh, as I said, if anyone uh, happens to need consultation, <clears throat> From these people, uh, you can find their, uh, their contacts easily, uh, even through our page on our advisory board, uh, on our uh, uh, talks and pre-talks, uh, which we have and had, and, uh, or, or uh, through the internet, and, uh, and possibly you can at some point go to India and uh, visit them uh, yourself, or maybe there are ways to, to contact them over the internet. But uh, anyway, I would really recommend people who might be stuck with certain, because I know cases where people have been living with issues for years, uh, for, for the whole life. And um, I also have seen people who just with one visit to an Ayurvedic doctor uh, or uh, the Siddha doctor or something, they say these are uh, miraculous uh, uh, people. These are uh, miracle doers. 
And so it, it, that's not the case. This is a science and um, it might look like a miracle to you, but it's not. It's just, it can be done. Uh, so thank you for your time. Uh, and uh, thank you, uh, thank to all the viewers for uh, being with us. And uh, we finished the first part of today. Coming back at Vinayak, uh, if you want to add something, please uh, go ahead. I, th I think it's good, David. I just want to thank uh, Dr. Nambi and Dr. Adipesh uh, for taking their time and, and being here. And by the way, happy Onam to both of you. <laughs> uh, hope you had good Sadhya because we missed that here. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's a festive day in in yeah. Kerala, and uh, we had a hard time um, getting all the uh, people from southern India in. Uh, so we have to be double grateful yeah. for uh, for uh, you coming here. Uh, thanks a lot, and we'll be back uh, in what in two and a half hours. Two and a half hours, yeah. Yes, so we'll be back in two and a half hours. For now, thanks everybody. Uh, see you then. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you.